The 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series has been one of the most competitive seasons since the series inception. But through 12 races, two men have stood tall. Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix have traded the points lead back and forth, both with an outstanding finishing record. Last week, the complexion of the point standings changed again on the final corner of the last lap. Andrew Ranger's going to win here in New Hampshire, and there's a crash. Kevin Lacroix hard into the inside wall. Alex LeMay is second, but Kevin Lacroix will not cross the finish line. The championship will now come to a conclusion where both of these French-Canadian racing heroes have a shot at glory. This is True North, strong and fast. and final round of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series. It's the Pinty's Fall Brawl from Jucasa Motor Speedway in Nels Corners, Ontario. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Bradley. Joining me is Adam Ross, Todd Lewis, and Clinton Jeffrey, both patrolling the pits for us here this afternoon. But, Adam, here we go. Final race of the season. We're going to be crowning a champion, and we do it at one of the finest facilities in the country. Alex Nagy and his group have done a phenomenal job here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. The crown jewel of Canadian motorsports is 5 8 mile oval. We chased away rain earlier on today. Young driver from Brampton, Ontario, Billy Zardo took the win in the 50 lap limited late model feature. Our qualifying session got rained out this afternoon, Dave. They're gonna start the race based on practice times, which puts Kevin Lacroix, driver the number 74, on the pole position. Interesting that happens because Kevin Lacroix, a key player in the race the last time out for the NASCAR Pinty Series in New Hampshire, which was an outstanding race really from start to finish. Kevin Lacroix led more than 90% of that race. In the last 10 laps, Andrew Ranger caught Lacroix, made the pass for the lead. Alex LeBay caught Lacroix, coming off the last corner on the last lap, they made contact. Lacroix crashes hard into the inside wall, never makes it across the finish line. It cost him 11 spots at the finish of that race. They went into the event with a two-point gap between them with Kevin Lacroix in front. They left the race with Kevin Lacroix 11 points behind Andrew Ranger. And that's setting things up for a tremendous points battle here today between those two drivers. And realistically, they have been juggernauts this season. Ranger with four wins, Kevin Lacroix with two. They've been amazing. Another amazing story, Crew Chief Donnie Thompson, after that wreck, deciding that car is not usable this week, they've gone to their backup equipment, but even backup equipment of the Lacroix tuning shop is as good as most of these teams' primary cars, Dave. Now, we'll crown a champion overall here today. We'll also crown the Johnston's Rookie of the Year. The 0-2 has been very good all season long. TJ Renamato has done what he had to do to earn the Jostens Rookie of the Year title. He kept his equipment clean. Some other spots still to be contested as well. Further back in the top five and top ten of the NASCAR standings, Dave, and every position matters. Yeah, we're looking at fourth place, Kennington and Hathaway. That's still very much up in the air. So still lots to be decided here today. Lots of storylines we'll be watching, but definitely we'll be focusing on Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix. Let's head down to the two contenders trackside. Let's join Clinton Jeffrey. Clinton? Thanks, guys. Well, if Andrew Ranger is going to win his third NASCAR championship here tonight, he's going to need to finish seventh or better if Lacroix goes out and dominates. Andrew, you've got a busy game plan tonight. What's your play to win the championship tonight? Well, the play is uh, to play safe and at the same time push pretty hard. You know, I need to be close to the 74. I think the Mopar car is fast and uh, we proven in practice we're P3, so it's going to be a good, uh, good race, and I hope I can put that 27 Mopar in the top of the list. Good luck, Andrew. Well, guys, in the past three years here, Andrew has one win and an average finish of 5.25. We'll see how he gets it done tonight. And if you look at the numbers in that same time period for Kevin Lacroix, they're even better. He has a race victory and also an average finishing position of 2.5 in those events. Kevin always looks for a dominating performance in the car. He'll need one tonight. Kevin, it was a rough finish at New Hampshire a week ago. Sometimes that's the way it goes in NASCAR. How's the car today? How do you feel about getting that dominating performance? Well, we, uh, we were fastest in practice, so really confident about uh, the race. Uh, tried to get the, the win and the most points uh, by the leading the, the most laps and uh, tried to get uh, the most we can here. And hopefully something happens with the 27 at the back. But uh, anyways, uh, it was a good season, a good year, and uh, I'll be really happy with a good finish here today. 
Good luck tonight. Thank you. All right, Kevin Lacroix in the last 12 races has finished all but one of the 1,849 racing laps. He's also led 26% of those laps. He's got his game face on. He's ready to go. Thanks very much, guys. It's going to be a lot of fun watching those two today. No matter what happens tonight, all season long, it's been a back and forth battle. We're going to see more of the same. And when we come back, we're going to fire the engines here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. The final event of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by General Tire. The anthems are just finishing up before we fire the engines. Dave, let's take a look back at the first 12 races of the season. NASCAR PT Series. And let's get this season underway. Oh my goodness, contact. Kevin LaCroix going to win round number one. We're racing here at Jucasa. Right on the bottom there behind the 27. <laughs> and a big old Mopar of Andrew Ranger takes the win. You are fast and racy. Autodrome Chaudière is it. And both cars are just I think he's going to drop pretty good. And Dumoulin wins for the first time. Ranger powers into the lead. It's all you, buddy. It's all you. Bring it home. Check your flag. And Ranger wins in Saskatoon and controls the point standings. And NASCAR roars into Alberta. And we have problems. This up in turn number one. Ranger rolls into victory lane. Let's get after it here in Twenty-Yard. Oh, and the leaders split Rena Motto. Dumoulin beats Tagliere streets of Trois-Rivières. And we are into NASCAR overtime. Stay with it, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. Hathaway into a quad. All good here, no pressure. Hathaway wins here in Riverside. Drivers, start your engine. He's there. Oh! Three car length lead. Oh, contact cover the quad. And for the final time, we are green at Autodrome St. Eustache. And Dilly gets the Malachi Crunch. Hathaway dominates the Lucas Oil 250. LaCroix hard on the throttle, a great start. Right up on the back bump for the leader. Well, we've got a new race leader. Well, we've got fireworks behind. Kevin LaCroix hard into the inside wall after contact. Like that, 10 different styles of racetracks in five different provinces. When it all shakes out, both Ranger and Lacroix have pretty impressive records. These were the two drivers that dominated 2019. It was a back and forth battle, Dave, and each of them were up to the challenge. They were, and they put on a show no matter where they stopped, all the way across Canada. And with those magic words we long to hear in motorsports, let's send it down to Adam Hollywood Kane. Racers, start your engine! And the field fires in advance of the Pinty's Fall Brawl, the series finale for the season here in 2019 at Jucasa Motor Speedway. This might be a story, Dave, for the first few laps. The cars, as they sat on the front straightaway, have developed a lot of fog on the windshields in the back windows. The crews are working feverishly to get the drivers some visibility. Well, there you saw the look out of Matt Pritico's car. Here's out the front windscreen of Cole Powell in the 73, and there's that fog. But look at the two cars that will be pacing the field. The Flying Five, driven by Ted Renshaw, celebrating his 80th birthday. Alongside him, Terry Huffman and a limited sportsman. Two pretty neat cars put back to when they race. Those are pretty much the way they came off the racetrack. And so thankful to Tony and the people at Pinty's for really encouraging this to happen. 
and making it happen for us, Dave. So we take a look at the General Tire starting lineup into row number four. That's where we find Julie Landauer and Anthony Simone. Row number five brings us Cole Powell in the 73 and Donald Teach in the 24. Back to row six we go, and it's L.P. Dumoulin in the 47, and Alex Gannett in the 18, filling in for Alex Tagliani. Sam Charlin filling in for Alex LeBay in the 36, and Dexter Stacy in the 91. Matthew Ken Kingsbury in the 75, Jason White in the 21, and then row number nine is Mark Dilley in the 64, Jamie Krizik from all the way out west in the 34. Chantel Kalika, another western racer in the 43, and great to see Matt Pritico back driving the 56. Brandon White in the 04, Pete Shepard the third in the number seven, and the field rounds out with J.F. Dumoulin in the 07, and T.J. Renamato in the 02. Now we were a little bit delayed in getting things going, a generator malfunction, but it was Jason White, complete driver suit and everything. He jumped out of the car. A couple other diesel mechanics got us back in business for tonight's race. Jason White, just a class act. It was a team effort, Dave. Now let's take a look at the E3 spark plugs race analysis. And you can see 200 laps will be the race distance. It's a break race, so that really throws strategy sort of out the window. DJ Kennington took the win last year to end a long winless drought. He'd love to do it again. He hasn't got a win yet in 2019. It's a strong Western contingent this weekend for the final race. Brett Taylor, of course, with a strong run, is on the front row. Jason White is back with us in the 21 car. Jamie Krizik returns as well in the 34. And Chantel Kalika, the 43, made the trek from Saskatchewan. She's here for the final race. Everybody looking to finish off 2019 on the right foot. Gain some momentum for 2020. And we'll keep a keen eye on all the Western racers as the field doubles up. Behind that Dodge Ram pickup truck, the pace truck that has paced the field at every stop so far here in 2019. As we said, the field lines up based on practice times. Brett Taylor was impressive. He'll line up second. Kevin Lacroix has chosen the outside lane for his start. Give you an idea how close practice was. Top nine cars all within a tenth of a second of each other as the field picking up steam. Deborah Hampel waves the green and we're underway in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. transmission in that car. It's actually a road course transmission, so he knew he'd have some struggles on starts and restarts over the course of the day. Man, I love that sound, Dave. Last race of the season, and these drivers are getting at it. DJ Kennington on the inside of Mark Antoine Cameron, and they're getting squirrely behind him. And saw Jamie Krizik in the 34 already down pit lane. Something amiss on that Chevy Camaro as he rolls to a stop in his pit stall. You can see just the way the rear end is sitting in that race car. I believe he's broke a trailing arm or a trailing arm mount. The rear end is not square in that car. You got nothing out back here. Clear by 10 out back. All by yourself. Joe Chisholm Jr. giving his driver, Andrew Ranger, a little help on the radio saying, don't bother with the mirror. There's no pressure back there. Just focus on the car in front of you. That's the three Kubota Chevrolet of Jason Hathaway. Andrew Ranger is arguably the best racer we are by driving out back to the 17. He's got the most no race. Pressure. But it's been 10 years since he won a championship. So do you go and try to win the race? Or do you know if I keep that 74 within a couple of spots on the car? Drivers like to tell you if you win the race, the points take care of themselves. So that could be Andrew Ranger's quest today. Find the checkered flag first, and you don't have to worry about what everybody else does. And it makes a good story, but in reality, these two have gone back and forth all season. Neither one has settled for second. And look at these cars deep in the field. Julia Landauer in the 28 battling with Donald Teach. Behind them, they're looking free wide. Battle for eighth spot as Donald Teach noses out ahead of the one-lob number 28 of Julia Landauer. 
The WeatherTech Dacia number 47 of LP Dumoulin, last year's champion in that mix as well. LP looking to lock up third place in points here today. It's fun to me. Look through this pack. Alice Gannett, a fill-in driver. Julia Landauer, a part-time driver. Sam Charlin in the 36. Jason White in the 21. Jason's a part-timer this year. There's a lot of new faces, so these drivers have to be wondering what they can expect from the cars around them. Sam Charlin, one of the drivers making his first start. Here's another part-time driver in the tri-car Dodge. That is Cole Powell, sixth position he picks up with that pass around the 22. That moves Powell right up behind Brett Taylor, who started on the front row early in the going, just 10 laps in to this 200-lap race day. But traditionally over the years, Jucasa, or as it was known before, Cayuga Speedway, you could make up a lot of spots or really dictate your race with pit strategy. Today's race is a break race. You have got to make your passes on the racetrack. It's a battle for ninth spot, the 47 LP Dumoulin. You see him come into focus there. He's got Alex Gannett in the Rona number 18 just behind him in the Chevrolet. And the 47 team really has struggled the latter half of the season, especially on the ovals. Just haven't been where they were last year during their championship run. But I thought early in the season he looked fantastic on the ovals. He did, so possibly could turn things around today. That's what we love about racing is everybody chases the bumper to bumper number seven and four of Kevin McQuaig. He's your leader early on here at Jucasa. In 1966, Cayuga Speedway was created. The D-shaped dirt oval was eventually paid to new owner Bob Slack with the crown jewel on the map. Now the new management group has reinvented and reinvigorated this racetrack, and it is once again Canada's most prestigious oval. They sure have put the shine back in this diamond as we see a battle for 16th spot between Pete Shepard and the 75 of Matthew Kingsbury. Pete Shepard was not here today for practice or qualifying. He had work obligations that kept him away. So as a result, he had to start at the back of this field. He is slowly working his way through the group of cars. But what is ahead of him is not very appealing. Right on board with Matt Critico in the 19, the APC Series champion here in Ontario and making a jump into an oval start in the NASCAR Pinty Series. He started previously on the road course. Yeah, great to see him out here on the ovals, and congratulations to him and that team for their APC Series championship this year. Back towards the front of the field, this is a battle for second spot. Andrew Ranger has it. Jason Hathaway wants it, but you've got battles all over the place, realistically. Mark Dilley and the one of Anthony Simone. This is a dice for 12th spot. Both of these cars have shown decent speed earlier today in practice. They look to be handling all right. You mentioned it early in the show, Dave, that the gap in these cars, we're talking about hundreds of a second, so everyone is fairly tightly bunched in speed. I expect once we get to about lap 50 of this run, halfway through the tire run, you're really going to see how, who has a good setup on their race car. Another great thing about this racetrack, too, is it's multi-grooved. You'll see some drivers sticking their left side general tires down on that white line. Other drivers up about half a groove. Some others will get up even a little bit further as the run wears on. But even in that outside lane, you can carry that momentum and run it down the straightaway and keep the speed up. If you look at Kevin Lacroix up in the distance, he is running a couple of feet higher on the track than Andrew Ranger in second. One driver showing a glowing right rotor is the 22. Todd? Yeah, guys, that glowing rotor is getting plenty of attention from the 22 team. Car chief Brian McDonald has asked Mark if he has got all the fans on in the car. He said yes, but they are paying attention to how bright that rotor is getting. Well, on the bright side, both front rotors are matching. So it's not <laughs> like one caliper is, is grabbing and the other is not. J.C. Payet atop the, the pit box for Mark Antoine Cameron. He usually watches the races with an entourage of people that they bring to each and every Pinty Series race. And Adam, we'll talk
Talk about the risk involved in blowing those brake rotors hot, especially early on in the run, is that you increase the temperature inside the wheel, you run the risk of melting down the bead on the tire, suffering a tire failure. Well, not to mention wearing out your brakes a lot sooner than you want to. Look at this pack. TJ Renamato in the 0-2 is a lap down. Cars trying to get around him. That's Dexter Stacy in the 91. Sam Charlan in the 36. 04 of Brandon White. You see Charlan in the 36 push way up the racetrack. Now he'll tuck in underneath the 02 of TJ Renamato. And LeBay not in that 36 car today. His good friend and Quebec NASCAR provincial champion Charlan is because Alex was in the NASCAR Xfinity race at the Roval in Charlotte. He finished sixth, both his and Mario Gosselin's top finish in the series. Big congratulations to both of them. Yeah, not only was he in the race, but he was a factor in that race. Very much so. When they got there, he was fast right away, and he says, I'm not afraid of walls. I race in 20 years. <laughs> exactly. Well, his experience in the NASCAR Pinty Series is a great asset. Charlene now getting his first look at your race leader as Kevin Lacroix puts the 36 Hotel La Concorde Ford one lap down. And Kevin Lacroix doing the same thing he did last week at New Hampshire. He just loves to be in the lead and he'll drive as fast as he's comfortable doing. Here's a driver who is not in the lead but working his way through the field. Pete Shepard looking to take over the 13th spot from Mark Dilley. Pete Shepard is always fast at this racetrack. It doesn't matter what kind of car he's in. There's a super late model, a late model, or the NASCAR Pinty Series. We have a change for fourth spot. It's a 46 Can Torque Dodge is now moving up. Brett Taylor showing that his outside front row starting spot was no fluke. No, Brett Taylor's looking great out here tonight. Remember, he had a fantastic run in Saskatoon, finishing on the podium, so he has the confidence. Riding on board the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington. Listen to the horsepower out of that M1 Mopar engine, Dave. Well, one driver would love to be mixing it up with these people. He's all the way from Grand Prairie, Todd. Jamie Krizik out of the car for the moment. You came a long way to get here. This is a tough break for you. It's not just for me. I, I just I feel bad for everyone that was a part of it. Crown, Crown Pell Ventures, Burmar Rewind, Lil John's Transport, Shade All, everybody back home. Uh, we we had a good season. We had a good Western swing, and so we figured we'd come out to Ontario here and give it a go. And uh, it, it was pretty short lived, unfortunately. So um, unfortunate for this, but really lucky to be here still. So thank you to everyone back home, and uh, hopefully we'll be back sooner rather than later. Thank you. There's disappointment all over the face of Jamie Krizik, but one of the nicest guys of me. Oh, what a great character. And I mean, to come out here and, and literally run half a lap in this event before the car broke. The good news, if there is any, it won't cause a ton of damage. It's going to roll back onto the trailer, get ready for next season, and hopefully we'll see more of it. Absolutely. He now knows the way to Jucasa Motor Speedway, so hopefully we'll see him on some Eastern trips here in 2020. But look at this battle, starting from sixth on back, the 73 Cool Powell, GM Pie Chevrolet, the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. You have the Circuit Acura, number 24 of Donald Teach, the Rona, number 18 of Alex Gennetti in there, and the... WeatherTech number 47 of LP Jubilee. I was good. Once you started at the front of the line, you had to go through all of them. <laughs> They're so close. They've been tied together for realistically the last five laps. And they're going to continue like that as everybody continues to chase Kevin Lacroix here on TSN. Welcome back to race number 13 of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series. It's the Pinty's Fall Brawl. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me is Adam Ross in the booth. Both Todd Lewis and Clinton Jeffrey pit side for us here today. And this a battle for third spot. Brad Taylor working the inside of his teammate, Jason Hathaway. The Cantor 46 gets around the Kubota number three. And he's pretty close to second place, Andrew Ranger. Let's see if he's got more in this tank. Well, he's been coming. He's closed the gap to the back bumper of the three of Hathaway. 
His two teammates now nose to tail and trying to close the gap on the race leader. You can see just ahead, about half a straightaway up, is Kevin Lacroix. And our 6 through 10 battle continues <laughs> to rage on. This is as far as they've been separated the entire race. There's about a car knife between each of them, but I'm sure that'll close in, Dave. Yeah, they swapped some positions back and forth, but really nobody able to get away. Nobody really dropping off the pace. It's right now led by the number 73 tri-car entry. That's Cole Powell. Remember, he ran a full season in 29 or 2018, I should say, and only ran select starts here in 2019. Brett Taylor is caught. 27 machine, a lot of live traffic just in front of these two, so we'll see if he's able to make a move or if he has to tuck in line. Well, they are almost side by side. Now they go side by side just ahead. The lap cars do. You see Dexter Stacy in the 91, the 04 of Brandon White just ahead of Andrew Ranger. And that's where Taylor makes his time, is right as they get into the corner and charge through the center. Taylor is really rolling the center of the turn well. Andrew Ranger always loves being captain highlighter, and that's where he chooses to go around the lap traffic, and Brett Taylor will follow him through. As they get around the 04 of White, now working on the 91 of Dexter Stacy. Good to see Stacy back-to-back starts here in the NASCAR Pinty Series again. They brought the whole family out this weekend. Great to see his dad, Wallace. The gang is all here, Dave. And just ahead, Jason White in the 21. The powder excavating entry will try to hold his line as Andrew Ranger ducked to the inside, pulled up just ahead. You can see from our onboard how close that was. Yeah, I think Jason White might have been trying to gauge what kind of car he's got to following Andrew off the corner. You can always learn something, no matter what's going on around you. Take a learning experience, but now he's going to learn that Brett Taylor is just as fast as Andrew Ranger. Taylor, new sponsor on board in Cantor for this final race of the season. And here is this gaggle of race cars, and now they are into lap traffic. The 07 is J.F. Dumoulin. He's battling with Samuel Charlin in the 36, and then it's lead lap cars. They're on back. I'll tell you, having a 24-car starting field has really changed the dynamic of this event. How happy must you be if you're Alex Nagy and the others who helped design this racetrack at the racing it's producing tonight? I mean, there's good battles all the way around this racetrack. It's not just at the front. It's not at the middle. All the way right front to back. And you've got good battles you can pick out anywhere, including this one. The battle for second. Taylor once again closing the gap on the back bumper. The Mopar Dodge of your points leader coming into this one, Andrew Ranger. They work to the inside of Mark Dilley. Of course, Dilley already a lap down because Kevin Lacroix is out in front by nearly half a straightaway over Andrew Ranger. So he hasn't continued to pull away. He built that gap, and he sort of maintained it for the last 30 or so laps. And it's not really a shock to see the bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper Total Lubricants number 74 of Kevin Lacroix able to get away early on in a run. It's whether or not he can stay there is the big question. We've seen, in, especially in New Hampshire, last time out, Andrew Ranger was able to catch him. Then the 36 of Alex LeBay was able to catch him. And what we're seeing in front of this battle for second is not Kevin Lacroix. That's his teammate, Matthew Kingsbury. <laughs> they are catching him fairly quickly, but out in front of him is Kevin Lacroix, the race leader. Yeah, the, the key difference is the yellow rookie stripes on the back bumper, that's 75. Battle for eighth spot there as the 18 of Gannett moves to the inside of the number 22 of Cameron. Cameron will try and pinch him down to the inside. You can see takes away the run that the 18 tries to get up off the turn. Alex Gannett, a very good oval track racer. You'll notice their teammate Donald Teach has just gotten around Cole Powell. He's trying to drive away and he is driving away from that 73 and Alex Gannett is trying to make his move on Cameron This battle for second has closed up even further as the 75 of Kingsbury is just ahead in the Duro King Dodge. Again, another vehicle out of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper camp of Kevin Lacroix. And Kingsbury, of course, raced for the first time with the series in St. Eustache, went to Loudoun, New Hampshire, and then finished off the season here at Jucasa. Would love to see him run the full schedule in 2020. Now, 
he looked very much at home in his first start at St. Estache behind the wheel of one of these NASCAR Pinty Series cars. And they're a little bit different than running a late model. They don't have the same feel. A lot of drivers will tell you that. Jumping into one of these things is difficult to go fast early on. More weight, less brakes. And so it makes things very dicey out there to drive. And look at this. Kevin Lacroix has caught Anthony Simone, but more surprisingly, he has caught Pete Shepard. Now, Pete Shepard having to start at the tail of the field, but this is where it becomes difficult for Kevin Lacroix. Now he's starting to get into quality race cars, and he'll have to put a lap on the Silver Line Tools number one of Anthony Simone. That's not going to be easy. Let's talk about the championship. There are 13 cars on the lead lap. If you're Kevin Lacroix and Don Thompson, do you want your driver lapping everybody up to the top 10? Yes. As long as Andrew <laughs> Ranger is in that top 10, that's a problem. Ranger only has to finish seventh. Keep as many cars on the lead lap as you can without giving up your lead. That's an interesting point. I thought just go beat them all and you'll be okay, but you're calculating. Well, you want to win the race, but you also have to manipulate everything you can. And right now, Ranger's in the second spot. And even though Brad Taylor is challenging, Ranger in third spot is still not good enough. Yeah, Ranger would be safe as he's not letting that 46 Cantor Dodge go as the Brett Taylor machine goes to the inside, and again, Ranger now will back up. I thought he was going to get a run on the outside of the turn as he did that last lap, but unable to do so as he'll tuck in behind. The center of that corner is where Brett Taylor is making tracks. Doing a great job, the driver from Calgary, Alberta. He really has started to turn some heads and switching over to the Team 3 Orange team, the uh, Ed Hackinson Racing Stable, and they've done great work to that 46 car. Wow, Anthony Simone and Pete Shepard, a little bit of contact there coming off the corner. Kevin Lacroix is still patiently driving behind these two, and Brad Taylor is closing the gap. Now, if you are Kevin Lacroix, maybe you don't want to put a lap down on them. You sure don't want to get tangled up if they get caught up in a mess. You're absolutely right, but look in his rearview mirror. Brad Taylor is right there. Now, this is not easy for Kevin Lacroix. There's nowhere for him to go because I guarantee you he's not going to make it three wide. Or at least Don Thompson is telling him, look, take your time, don't take chances. But like you said, you have to go. Yeah, and especially now that Brad Taylor starts to take a peek underneath the bumper to bumper Lacroix tuning number 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix, he knows the wick has been turned up and he'll try to make a move around these two lap cars as Simone and the seven of Pete Shepard. Trouble. Make on. Yes, we do have big trouble. Turn number three, Jason White has made significant contact with the outside wall. The hood crumpled on the 21 of Jason White. Caution flag flies here on lap 78. And that one hurts. Let's have another look down between three and four. We're on board with Kennington. Saw a little bit of sparks on the ground as they drove into the corner, and I'm not sure what would have caused that. Well, Jason White climbs out of the number 21 car. Heavy front end damage on the 21 machine. Rad is torn out of it, and White is none too pleased. Now you can see Jason White obviously frustrated as he jumps out of the car. He throws his gloves on the ground, and you could hear him as he was jumping out of the car. But pit stop time for the 47 of LP Dumoulin. Some adjustments. They can't change tires at this point, Dave, but they can make chassis adjustments. They can make air pressure adjustments. Clinton Jeffrey is in the pits with a driver we just saw is none too pleased. Well, Jason, you were pressed into service to help get the lights on here, and your race ended a little bit shorter than you wanted. What happened out there? I just impatience, man. I mean, I, I gave all the room in the world. My car was tight on the bottom, so I was running the top. Giving anybody that was faster than me by even a tick, I was letting them go. I let Brandon go there on the inside. He was behind me for about 10 laps. I gave him all the room in the world, and he came up and took me out. So I don't know. Might be driving over his head a little bit, I think. So uh, we'll just have to take it on the chin. It's a tough break for the man from Sun Peaks, British Columbia. Out of this one in the finale, the Pinty's full brawl. Kevin Lacroix continues to lead. Welcome back to the final race of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series calendar here at Jucasa Motor Speedway. 
Getting set to go back to green. Kevin Lacroix is your race leader. Brett Taylor will start alongside as we make our way onto the front chute and back under power. Matthew Kingsbury got the free pass. He is back on the lead lap, and we're back under green again. Brad Taylor not getting a good launch. Now you can see that makes it look like the 74 of Kevin Lacroix fires out of a slingshot. Well, Lacroix is a great restart driver, so compound that with Brett Taylor's transmission issues, and Jason Hathaway is going to be sending Taylor a Christmas card. Now, Brett Taylor alongside the 27 of Andrew Ranger, but look who's up joining that battle, the 24 of Donald Teach. There's a driver who's been frustrated this year and would love to leave here with a win. Donald Teach, frustration is an understatement for how that driver from Boischatel, Quebec, Whoa, feels. We got problems all the way back in the back. The seven of Pete Shepard, who made a stop during that last caution, is the reason for the second caution of the evening here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Doing a 360 like that in the pack and not hitting anything is pretty impressive. And there you can see he goes around on the appears to be the nose of the 47 of LP Dumoulin. The WeatherTech Dodge got into the back of the number seven. Have another look. Fancy bit of driving out there. That was Matt Critical we were riding on board with. Was it the seven or the 91? It looks like the 91 of uh, Dexter Stacy may have gotten into the back of the seven of Pete Shepard. Hard to say, Dave, but we are ready. That was a brief caution period, and it'll be lap 95 when we take this restart about five laps short of the halftime break. And now we have Jason Hathaway starting up on the outside alongside the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. So this will be the first time the leader takes the inside for the restart as we anticipated this time off of four green flag waves. Once again, we're back underway. So Andrew 
Andrew Ranger giving his crew some instructions, all important instructions as they prepare to make some changes, but a great crowd of people as we hit the VP Race Fuel halfway update. Three race leaders with three lead changes, three cautions for 19 laps, and this is vital. 15 cars are on the lead lap, Dave. Well, now the opportunity comes to make those cars even better for the last 100 laps as their crews prepare to jump into action. Todd? And the service begins on the 74, led most of the first half of the race with a car that is getting tighter. Crew Chief Don Thompson Jr. says they're going to make a little adjustment on that. The three car of Jason Hathaway, also a problem they battled all year. Right from the center off, they're going to make some pretty significant changes. Clinton is with the 27. Thanks, Todd. The 27 of Andrew Ranger pulls in here as the leader of the race and the contender here for the championship. Calm and cool and collected. The crew going to make a slight chassis adjustment and get him ready for the second half of this brawl. You know, it's fascinating to watch these teams work at half speed because half speed for these teams is still 10 times faster than you or I could change a tire, Dave. Yeah, they have five minutes to complete all the work they need to do. They really only necessarily need a portion of that, but we'll take a quick break. We'll bring it back to Jocasta Motor Speedway. On board with Andrew Ranger, he took over the lead in the last dash before we hit the caution and the halfway break. He'll have Kevin Lacroix starting on the outside. Two of your points leaders coming into this race and a dash to the green, green flag once again. Twelve and a half races have led us to this point. There are 15 cars on the lead lap. Andrew Ranger only has to beat eight of them to be the champion of the 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series. Remember, just two races ago, the points were tied at St. Estash. So it has been a dogfight all season. Had it not been for turn four on the last lap of New Hampshire, they would be dead even for the points there. lead in this battle. Still there, still there. He's in your door, 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 corner, corner. Still there, still there. Oh, there, there, there. Be careful, be careful. You're down here, there, 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 there. Be careful, because that's Andrew Ranger down on the inside, because if you turn down, he's not backing up. No, but good advice for Kevin Lacroix. Good spotting there. Their eyes on top of the tower. A great vantage point here at Jocasa. Ooh, something going on in the 73. Looks like Cole Powell checked up. And the 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron caught in that as well. Right on board with Cole Powell. Doesn't sound like it's off the base. There's Julian Landauer going by. Another car out of the DJK stable. The trouble is when you're off the line, you want to be on. Everyone's on fresh tires right now so they can all get the most out of their race cars. Here we are back at the front with Andrew Ranger applying the pressure. Saw how good that car was just before the midway break as Kevin Lacroix seemed to be sliding back just a little bit. The tables have now turned. Lacroix back in control. Squirrely, watch the hands of Kevin Lacroix. 
Wow. Not quite as smooth as it was before. And there was not a lot of room to get down between Jason Hathaway and Donald Teach, but he did it. <laughs> Donald Teach is that close. And behind Donald Teach, we should mention, is the 18 of super sub Alex Gannett, who's looking very much at home behind the wheel of that Rona Epipen Chevrolet Camaro. DJ Kennington trying to break into the top five, looking to get around the 46 of Brad Taylor. He draws right up on the back bumper. I don't know if he gave him a nudge there or not, but he's definitely looking to get some bite. Remember, DJ Kennington won last year. He snapped up five-year winless skid in that Castro Edge Dodge. Can you repeat the magic here today? He's been hanging out inside the top five, top 10 pretty much all evening long. It's gonna be a tall Ooh, order as contact. Donald Teach drives it under the 74. Kevin Lacroix, they make contact. The right front of Teach, the left rear of Lacroix. That's almost exactly what happened at New Hampshire one race ago to Kevin Lacroix making contact with the 36 of Alex LeBay. Unfortunately, at New Hampshire, it ended a lot differently. That's a big hit. Well, whenever you see the smoke that comes from tire-on-tire tire contact, you'll watch for a few laps to see a, a flattening tire on the 74 of Lacroix or on the 24 of Teach. Is Jason Hathaway looking to take it? He's behind him here. Clear by Hoppus. That was a gift. Just ride around with him. The car will come to you. 74 fell back to fifth. We're all good, Andrew. Just follow that three. No pressure out the back. Not only is Joe Chisholm reassuring Andrew Ranger, but that was Dave White telling Andrew, big picture, the 74 is behind you, working his way back. You just settle in as Team EHR looking on. And there's Andrew Ranger's team from their pit box looking on. You're watching NASCAR on TSN. Welcome back to the Pinty's Fall Brawl at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Your leader continues to be the Kubota number three of Jason Hathaway. This is a battle for third spot between Donald Teach and the Cantor number 46 of Brett Taylor. Taylor rolls to the inside of Teach through the center of the corner. Draws even with his driver's door. Then he'll drive into the corner. Just making this pass half a car length at a time. And that's the thing with this racetrack is you can carry the momentum up on the outside so passes don't necessarily finish very quickly, although it looks like Teach backed out a little bit and let the 46 go. We should mention Howie's Canel Jr., the crew chief on the 46 car here this weekend. He's been around this series for a long, long time, of course, as a driver. And then when Matthew Scannell was racing, he was a crew chief. Good to see him with Brett Taylor in the bunch here this weekend. Now another guy who's always around the paddock area, always a big smile on his face, and very knowledgeable about these race cars. And it seems to be working out because he is eating up the distance between himself and the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. Goes into the corner just a little bit higher than Ranger, swings the car down to the inside. When he passed Donald Teach, he started the pass halfway between three and four. He finished the pass halfway between three and four the next lap. Now, Adam, we're, we're just over 50 laps left to go in this fall brawl. If you're Andrew Ranger, is it now time to start pushing? Dave, I think it's just the opposite. It is now time to sit back until you see the 74 big in your rear view mirror. When he's the car immediately behind you, then it might be time to pick up the pace. Until then, what he wants to see here is a little bit of racetrack in front of him, a little bit of racetrack behind him. Just racing. Got the 18 pocket. behind you and the 74 behind him. 50 to go. And there you can hear the update from his crew. Where is that 74? Mopar has a branded car in the NASCAR and CASCAR series for 26 years. They're looking for their very first championship with Andrew Ranger here today. Well, John Camilleri has got to be excited. I mean, he's been the man on the scene for so very long. I remember when he got his first win. That was exciting. Now they're looking for their first championship. This could be a great night. Could be. Still a lot of racing left to be completed as we ride on board once again with Cole Powell, driver from Mount Bridges, Ontario. Up at the front, though, a couple of teammates have found each other. Jason Hathaway, your leader in traffic. Brett Taylor taking advantage. 
of an arrow racetrack in front of him. So Taylor able to close the gap fairly quickly. Things are pretty busy in front of the race leader, Jason Hathaway, as Brett Taylor closes in. Now you can see there's, again, same problem that Kevin Lacroix had just before the break with lap cars in front. Matt Pritigo is right down on the inside. J.F. Dumoulin in the 07 now gets around the 56 and plugs it to the inside. That lets the leaders go by. And Pritico has been doing this all night long as we ride along with the trailers by Jim Bray Ride. So they're inside, inside. Clear, clear. Half back in line. Just for 46, just two, two. Got a big gap back in 24. I want Jeff Gutler to tell me stories. <laughs> He's so calm. Oh, you know what? No matter what's happening like this, almost a bump and run for the 46 of Brett Taylor as he looks for the lead. That was a big leap down the hill. Bumper, bumper, Taylor. bumper. Right back inside, all the way in the bottom. Right at your door. Right at your bumper, you got the momentum clear. Clear. Hathaway able to get by using that momentum of the outside lane, but for how much longer can he hold by a half, that no 46 behind him? This is where the experience of Hathaway plays a part. You don't necessarily pinch Brett Taylor down, but you just hold your own line, force him to use all the tires that you can. You do use more brakes, more tires, more energy on the inside than you do on the outside. He's coming, and Taylor is there. They're side by side, in through three and four. And realistically, Taylor is going to school right now. He is learning a lot from Jason Hathaway, and he has ever since he made this switch over to this team. He's going into the corners hard, and he's sliding up a lane. But Jason Hathaway is such a smart oval racer, he's two lanes up the track, so he's got lots of room. If Taylor wants to come up, Hathaway's going to come up, but he's got to make sure he still has position on the outside. should mention, too, that these drivers have not touched each other through this entire day. again for the driver, the Kubota number three into lap traffic. Chantel Kalika in the AGI number 43 tucks to the inside lets the leaders go by. We are down to the last 37 laps of this one and just to show what a race fan Brett Taylor is when he first came out with that 46, he wrapped it like Days of Thunder. That's what got him interested in stock car racing and he ran a green and yellow number 46 and we are under you can see the hand out the window by Jason Hathaway indicating he's off the gas as a right front tire down on the 04 of Brandon White. He'll find pit lane. Brandon White will head down pit road. Big sparks as the chassis grinds on the asphalt. Now the concrete pads. The 04 will find his stall and the crew will go to work getting that right front tire changed. Well, in the trouble with all those sparks, that means they were dragging the sway bar, the bolt that holds the sway bar on, Dave. So you want to worry that you haven't dislodged the sway bar from the car. They'll have to lift up on the right side to get the jack under. Now they'll be able to try to change that right front. The opportunity for the 73 of Cole Powell to head down pit lane two. He started to slip back just a little bit. The car prepared out of the DJK shops. We'll take another quick break. Your leader continues to be Jason Hathaway. Jason Hathaway from Uxbridge, Ontario. We'll leave the field back to green. You can see a strong field of cars still in this one as they bunch up through three and four. So it's still really anybody's race here in the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Andrew Ranger is back there in the Hornets. That's Kevin Lacroix is right behind him. But this battle for the lead, let's see if Brett Taylor can get a better start. 29 laps to go out of 200 here at Jucasa Motor Speedway as we ride on board with DJ Kennington. Great view from on board DJ Kennington's car. And Dave, we really need to give props to Sherry Putnam and Jeff Lee Cox. Clear the 46, with you. The entire crew from the NASCAR Pinty Series, this has been a challenging season. Nine out of our 12 stops on the 
the tour this year, Dave, were affected by rain. I'm pretty sure you brought Put it. On I'm just going to start calling you Rainman. He's there. He's there. Side by side. Donald Teague's spotter indicating Alex Gannett on the inside as Gannett moves to try and pick up the spot underneath the Surgery Acura Chevrolet, and he does so. There's a few drivers near the front of this field who have never won a race. The 46 of Brad Taylor, the 18 of Alex Gannett. You know they're going to be hungry. And while you give a tip of the hat to the NASCAR crew, I also would like to acknowledge uh, Bill Rouse Sr., a legendary figure in Canadian motorsport, unfortunately passed away recently. So our thoughts and prayers uh, with the Rouse family. DJ Kennington close with that family as we ride on board the Castro Edge Dodge. Taylor has been awfully close to leading a lap 
He manages to get a nose up to the door of the three of Hathaway, but can't make it stick. Down into the corner once right again. On the field. Field. Coming in clear, clear, protect, protect, protect. Good advice. All good in line. Protect, get down to the right inside. Right on your bumper, trying to get under you, trying to get under you. No bow, right there, it's your bumper. Protect, protect, protect. Here he comes, inside, inside, inside. Ranger and Lacroix still fourth and fifth as we watch this battle for the lead. There will be two to go when we cross the line this time. Jason Hathaway is using all of the racetrack at his disposal, coming all the way up to the outside wall on corner exit to keep that momentum. Brent Taylor has a faster race car. He is very much quicker. There is a look at the Mopar Dodge and at the DJK stables. Andrew Ranger, your points leader, as the white flag waves. Ranger in fourth. And look at Taylor now on the back bumper of Hathaway. Hathaway damn near stopped going into turn one. He drove right down to the bottom to protect. Into three and four for the final time. Taylor's there. A bump to the inside. Taylor's going to go by in the 46. The first career win for Brett Taylor here at Jucasa. Hathaway second, Tejan third, Andrew Ranger, your champion with a fourth place finish. One in the 46 pit for today's win, and of course, the championship celebrations for Andrew Ranger. But take a look at this pass one more time. What a beautiful bump and run by Taylor, just able to clear the number three coming off the corner. That is a textbook bump and run. Howie Scannell celebrating on pit road. And it's your Mopar winning moment, becoming the first Western Canadian to win a NASCAR Pinty Series race. How about that burnout? We have a failure on the left <laughs> rear tire. So, Brad Taylor led one lap, and that was the checkered flag lap. Lap 200 of the Pinty's ball brawl. We are going to be right back with a very excited winner. fireworks display over top of Jucasa Motor Speedway. The checkered flag has waved for the final time of the 2019 season. It's taken 160 tries in the NASCAR Pinty Series for a driver from Western Canada to reach victory lane. And that's exactly what has happened here today. And look at them celebrate. Brett Taylor from Calgary, Alberta on top of the roof of his number 46. Clinton is in victory lane. Come on down, Brett. Oh. Well, what an amazing race. What does it mean to finally make it here oh, to victory lane? Brett. You don't understand, like, racing with these boys for like five years and now, now having the chance to, you know, wave the checkered flag, racing against my teammate for, you know, first place. It was so much fun. I can't even, words can't even describe. Can't thank my wife. Love you so much for always supporting me. My family at home, my four kids at home, you know, my team, EHR, all the crew, how we came on board for this race and we kicked ass. Woo! I, I don't know, man. I can't, I don't know. Is there anything else to say? Oh, yeah, thanks to my sponsors, Can Torque, um, NASCAR Pinty Series. They support me so much. You know, they're, they support this whole series so much. Pinty's themselves, they're such great supporters of the sport. You know, they're always giving us positive, like, uplift and texts and everything. It's awesome, man. Great job, there he is, Brett Taylor, a NASCAR Pinty Series winner. Jason, it's an awesome finish for the team. I know you would like that top step. That was a great battle between you two. Yeah, it was a good battle with uh, Brett Taylor and I and the EHR team going out of there. So he was he was quicker than me. I was just trying to do everything I could to stay in front of him. So he was uh, he was getting in harder in the corner than I was, and I was just a little tight off. So it was kind of making it up both ways. But uh, I'm sure the fans loved it. I would checked out there pretty good at the uh, at the middle part there. So it's all good. Got to thank Kubota Fest, Eddie Chaco, Kugel Bearings, and uh, definitely Ed Hackson and my wife, uh, my wife Jamie. Nice way to finish the season. Well, here with Donald Tees. Donald, third tonight. Uh, you can be pretty happy with that. This place has given you some up and downs over the years, hasn't it? 
You know, I love that track, and uh, at the end, we're so quick. I thought I was getting, uh, you know, uh, on those two, two cars, but uh, on the restart, the 18, they didn't, they didn't help me. You know, it hit me on my, on my door, so those two cars went away. But I think we were faster than them at the end, so we should um, ask more 10 laps to pass them. But, you know, finish third. You know, we had a bad season, so finish on the podium for the last one, that's almost a win for us. Solid run for Donald Teach here tonight, guys. Has been a frustrating time in the 2019 season for the 24 team. Let's take a look at your top 20 finishers here today. You see Pete Shepard salvaging a sixth place finish. Great run for Shepard. Alex Gannett drifted back to seven spots. Still a fantastic run. Matthew Kingsbury in ninth. Now we take a look at the second half of the top 20. Landauer faded a little bit, but comes home 14th. She's had some struggles getting to the end of our races, so it's great to see her in there for the whole show, Dave. Yeah, and you can see the mix of manufacturers in the NASCAR Pinty series in through the top 20. You've got a great mix of Chevrolet, Dodges, and Fords as the celebration continues in victory lane. So many people stopping to congratulate Brett Taylor. Tyler Case was there, Alex Nagy, there was Tony Spiteri. Now let's ride on board with Andrew Ranger to celebrate his title. He's done this twice before as a champion in the NASCAR Pinty series. He's the first champ since 2016 to complete all laps in the season. Only two have done it. That is an impressive feat. Caden Lapsovich did it during his championship run, and now Andrew Ranger has done it, and now he's going to burn down the house. during the donuts, but Andrew Ranger, he doesn't care. He's the champ. Rolls into victory lane, narrowly avoiding the Dodge Ram pace truck. The trophy is now set up in victory lane. The Mopar Dodge finds his way there now for the big trophy in the 2019 season. Let's take a look at your point standing. See, final point standings here in 2019 and there you see an 11 point gap between Ranger and Kevin Lacroix. So it's the same gap as they entered this weekend in. How about Jason Hathaway passing DJ Kennington by one point for fourth? And he's ready to get out of the car. Let's head back to victory lane for your championship celebration. A decade between championships but Andrew Ranger has come away with a 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series title on the strength of four wins and great consistency from Team Mopar. He gets congratulations and handshakes. We had the fireworks and then Andrew Ranger put on quite the smoke show as he brought this number 27 car into victory lane for celebration. There's the smile. There's the congratulations and hugs all around. Yeah. Finally, another championship that you worked so hard to get. How does it feel to be champion for the third it's, time? It's amazing. You know, it's. I want to thank my crew, my guys, my sponsor, my family, my girlfriend. It's just amazing to win a, a third championship. Fantastic. So happy. Thank you. Consistent all year long and also four victories led the way. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, we have an amazing season. Uh, Full win on the oval, it's fantastic at Mopar. Want to thank John, thank you very much to support us at the shirts. Amazing, I'm so happy. Thank you very much. Andrew Ranger, 2019 NASCAR Pinty Series Champion. Big embrace with John Camilleri from Mopar. And Dave, you know, his first two championships, he was a young up and comer. He was on the move. I almost Andrew think Ranger at this stage, he's got a child now. He has a different appreciation for where he is in his career. And how about this? TJ Rinomato gets to rip off the yellow rookie tape. He is your 2019 Justin's Rookie of the Year. <laughs> Had no expectations of running the full season for Rookie of the Year, but Dave, he wanted to. He ran a couple of races, decided to run the entire series. Vice President of Competition, Steve O'Donnell, and everyone at the R&D Center. Congratulations to you, Mopar, DJ Kennington, Dave White on a great, on a great run. Congratulations, guys. Brandon Thompson, of course, the managing director of touring series for NASCAR, giving congratulations to Andrew Ranger and Dave White, Sherry Putnam. 
And representing the car owner on the left there, that's Chase Kennington, hands in the air, standing at the right rear corner of the car. This NASCAR on TSN broadcast has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By VP Racing Fuels. And by Honeydew by Clean Flow. One honey of a lube. Racers, start your engines! Adam Hollywood Kane kicked us off in style tonight. And what a show it was right from the drop of the green flag. A full field battle for each and every one of these 200 laps. But it was the two drivers we were watching all night in the championship hunt. Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix were back and forth. These were the two drivers with a chance at the title. But the glory tonight goes partly to Brett Taylor on a beautiful bump and run for the win. A veteran move for the sophomore driver as he takes his first checkered flag of his NASCAR career. Andrew Ranger burning it down in the Mopar 27. That's a cool shot as he hoists the trophy high. He is your 2019 NASCAR Pinty's hey, Series no, champion. champion. And the spring of the champagne makes it all official. For Todd and Clinton and Adam, I'm Dave Bradley. Thanks very much for joining us in 2019. We'll see you next year. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.